Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about the two key IP address standards, IP version 4 and IP version 6. But before I mention those two and how they're formatted, I want to just say what a standard is more generally because they are really, really important. So a standard provides rules for different areas of computing. Effectively, a standard which is published is a very long document written usually by a group of people specifying exactly how some aspect of computing should work. And if you follow these rules specified in the standard, then you're able to carry out whatever process is being specified. Now, the idea is a standard is published and all sorts of people are then able to follow it. And the beauty is when a standard is consistently followed by everyone involved, it would allow different hardware and software to interact regardless of the product itself or even who made the product for manufacturer. The idea being that if Dell and Apple and Lenovo and Acer are all following the same standard, then all of those devices would be able to communicate according to the rules in that standard. Now, the fancy word for devices and software being able to work together despite being different is interoperability. So devices which are interoperable are able to work together despite being a bit different. They're just following the same rules. Now standards are everywhere in computer science because how else would you manage all the millions of companies and the different countries and different products and the old and new products. It's so confusing and a bit of a mess. Unless you've got standards, how on earth would you be able to communicate and keep things as consistent as you are able to? So here are some examples, things like Unicode with covered file formats are good examples of standards. All data is stored in binary, and so you need a standard to specify how to understand that binary. There are different standards of USB and CDs and languages like HTML and CSS. All of these originated from a set of rules which just a lot of companies have accepted and followed. Now, those are just some general examples, but in terms of networking, which is where we are focused right now, protocols are great examples of standards. So a protocol is a set of rules which enable communication to be followed, but there are different standards within protocols in some cases. So there'll be a standard for HTTP, for IMAP, for the post office protocol, for FTP, etc., etc., and that's also true for IP. So IP itself, the internet protocol, is a standard, but within it, there are two separate standards for how to format IP addresses, which is really our focus here. These two formats are IP version 4 and IP version 6. Versions 1 to 3 and 5 don't really exist and have been forgotten about, so they're not important. Just 4 and 6. 4 is a bit old, 6 is the current one which should be being rolled out. Now, an IP address, as I've covered, is allocated to each device running the internet protocol. The idea being you want a unique address which can specify a particular device on a network. And the IP address will tell you, at least roughly, where it is located. Now, the IP version 4 address will use 32 binary digits, 32 bits, to specify this address. And it will look something like this, right? 32 bits in a row is a bit of a headache to have to deal with. And so, as part of this standard, people to improve readability will express it in something called dotted decimal notation. Now, this is a way just to try and make it easier for us to understand. The way it works is each of these four bytes in the IP version four address are converted to the decimal equivalent. And because it's a byte, it means the numbers are only going to be between zero and 255. And we've got a dot between each byte to make it really clear what part of the IP address it's coming from. And I've put that greater than sign just to kind of show that this is really a better way to represent it. It's easier for us to understand. But the key bit is IP version 4, that standard specifies that all IP addresses should have 32 bits. Now, there is an issue about that, which I'll come on to later. You might be able to start to think about why there is an issue. But IP version 6 was a standard released later on, and it's the current active standard. Now, this massively increases the number of bits allocated to each device. So now we have four times as many, we've now got 128 bits as opposed to 32 bits. Now, because that's so much longer, suddenly does a decimal becomes too long itself. So we need an even more compact way to represent this. And we usually show IP version six addresses in colon hex notation. So 
not dotted decimal, colon hex. Now we shrink each of our, well, <laughs> we've got eight groups of 16 bits in, you know, eight times 16 is 128. So we break it down into eight groups of 16, which is four hex digits. So we've got four hex digits followed by colon, not a, dec not a dot like before. And this is how we represent the longer IP version six addresses. Each of these eight groups does have four hex digits. It's just sometimes if we've got a leading zero or if we've just got zero in that block, we ignore the zero or just write one down to make it even more compact. So I guess my key message is we have even within IP, which is a standard in of itself, we have two varying standards. Each one has quite a different way of specifying an IP address. So the underlying concept is the same, except just in two different standards, we've got two different ways to represent our addresses. And interestingly, actually, they're not interoperable. They're not designed to work together. There are ways to convert between the two, but the standard authors did not design it to work together. They're meant to be fairly separate. Now, the reason for this is perhaps not something you need to think too much about, at GCSE at least, but the reason why a new standard was made for IP in particular was because actually IP version 4 did not provide nearly enough unique addresses. We've only got about 4.3 billion unique addresses. I say only, that's a massive number, but it's not enough for every human on the planet to have multiple devices, clearly. And it's that number because we've got 2 to the power 32. So actually this fact was realized quite early on. So even in the late 80s, before the World Wide Web was invented, it was recognized that actually there would not be enough eventually. You'd run out of unique addresses. This is called being exhausted. You exhaust the supply of unique IP addresses. And this graph shows how over time, it shot up the number of IP addresses being used, eventually getting up to this upper limit. And we effectively ran out in the early 2010s. So despite IP version 4 still being used, there are, in theory, not any more unique addresses, although there are ways around this, actually. So there were some new technologies invented to try and delay this exhaustion and try and delay this running out of IP addresses. But eventually, the solution was to create a new standard which would replace the old standard. And this new standard was IP version 6. That was back in 1995, and it hasn't fully been rolled out yet. Not every IP address is version 6. There's a decent chance you've got a version 4 address still, despite it being invented over 20 years ago. I guess the lesson being that it takes a long time for standards to be accepted and used by major companies. Now, the solution is good because IP version 6, with many more bits per address, can represent around 340 trillion, trillion, trillion unique addresses. So enough addresses for all of us to have trillions of IP addresses each. So, so many shouldn't really be a problem with depletion for a very, very long time, maybe forever. So I think this case study is a good example of how hard it is to put in a new standard into action. They don't happen all the time. They're really infrequent because it requires everybody to adhere to these rules and adaptations can take quite a long time.